morning everyone. I am so glad that you have tuned in to our Sunday morning snippet where we are starting a new series today continuing to talk about fear and this new series is called Monsters. We are going to look at different things that we may face that may bring fear, but God doesn't want us to be afraid, and we are going to look at someone in the Bible that can show us how we can overcome these different fears. But before we find out all about that, let's all enter into a time of worship. one-eyed monsters or maybe 
uh, this past week with people that were going around dressed up as monsters for Halloween. I'm not talking about those kind of monsters, but I'm talking about the things that scare us. Whether we are afraid of the dark or we are afraid to try new things, we're afraid of the things that are out there. Um, all around us, and everybody has different kinds of fears, whatever they may face. And so it may be the monsters out there, those things that we're afraid of, or it could be like I talked two weeks ago and I talked about the monsters within. And a lot of times we allow that fear of failure to creep in and we don't even try new things because we're afraid that we will fail or we won't succeed or we won't be able to do a good job. And this week I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different. But before I get into that, um, how many sports fans do I have out there? I mean, you love sports games. You love to go, whether it's to football, basketball, you love to go to them in person, whether it's professional or watch them on TV. Now, how many of you, if you can't be there and you know it's coming on TV, you still record it anyway so you can go back and watch it? I'm talking you are a die-hard sports fan because you want to be able to go back and watch it every play, every single thing, and see what happened. Now, you are some die-hard sports people if you do that. Now, I know I've recorded some games and I just kind of get to the end because I want to see who wins, you know, unless I've already looked it up on my phone to find out who it is. And, but a lot of you big, big sports fans, you want to watch the whole thing because you want to be able to see play by play. Chances are you have a lot in common with people that love mystery books and mystery stories and mystery programs and you want to watch them and try to figure it out. You guys have a lot in common because you want to be able to know what's coming and then just the suspense and the thrill of it all. Now, I know I like to watch mystery movies and I used to enjoy reading uh, mystery books, especially when I was in elementary school. I know this is going to make me sound old, but I loved all the Nancy Drew books. I used to check those out and um, I used to love to, to read those and try to figure them out before the ending came. In fact, Mr. Mike doesn't always like to watch movies with me because I am always trying to figure everything out and I will tell the end before it happens. And he's like, stop, quit, ruin it. Ruining it for me, you know, and I don't know, some of you might do the same thing. And um, it's always such a, such a, um, a tease when people give the spoiler alerts and they let you know what's going to happen. And you're like, oh man, I wanted to see that for myself. And we enjoy that thrill and that suspense when we're reading books, when we're watching movies. But I would think that when it comes to life, though, we don't really like the mystery. We don't really like the suspense because, and why is that? It's because we want to know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and how it's going to happen. I mean, am I right? I mean, do you feel that way? I mean, do you like not knowing what's ahead of you? Well, that's the monster that I'm going to talk about today, and that is the monster that lies ahead, and I'm talking about the future, because we like to know what is going to happen, and we like to know how it's going to happen, and when it's going to happen, but that isn't always the case. You know, we can try to make plans for the future, but we don't know what is going to ultimately happen in the future. I mean, accidents happen and things happen. I mean, my goodness, this, this past year, nobody, nobody saw that coming. We never knew that a world pandemic was going to take the course that it did and close things down. I'm sure if we had known this two years ago, we would have been much more prepared. But the fact of the matter is we didn't know. And here's the thing, when it comes to life, we don't know what all is going to happen. But 
Here's the thing, and it can seem awful, awful scary when you don't know what's going to happen. But here's the good thing, is we have God on our side, and we can look to Him because why? We can trust Him, and that's what He wants us to do. That's what faith is all about, trusting in what you don't see. You've got to trust God and know that He is going to be there with you and for you. He wants you to be content knowing that He is always in control and that He wants us to do the right thing and He wants us to trust Him to work things out. Well, as you know, I have been talking about David and I have um, been talking about Saul and everything that's been going on in his life. Well, today we're going to pick up um, on the story of David and he is living in the great unknown. Uh, the general who became a hero is now on the run for his life from Saul because Saul is trying to kill him. He has gotten so jealous that he wants to kill David. So he is running for his life. And even in this darkest time and that unknown and he doesn't know what's going on, David chooses to trust God. And I'm going to be reading today from 1 Samuel chapter 24. And if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to read along with me. And I'm going to read quite a bit of this story because I want you to really hear it. So if you haven't gotten your Bibles or you haven't found it, that is 1 Samuel chapter 24. All right, and I am going to start reading in verse 2. It says, at the place where the road passes, some sheepfolds, see Saul, David had gone on and Saul was in pursuit of him. So this is where it picks up. Saul went into a cave to relieve himself. Now, if you're not quite sure what that means, it means he had to go to the bathroom okay and they didn't have nice bathroom stalls or rest areas so you went into a cave or behind a tree in order to do your business so this is what happened he went into the cave to use the bathroom but as it happened David and his men were hiding farther back in that very same cave Now's your opportunity, David's men whispered to him. Today the Lord is telling you, I will certainly put your enemy into your power to do with as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of the hem of Saul's robe. But then David's conscience began bothering him because he had cut Saul's robe. The Lord knows I shouldn't have done that to my Lord, the king, he said to his men. The Lord forbid that I should do this to my Lord, the king, and attack the Lord's anointed one, for the Lord himself has chosen him. So David restrained his men and did not let them kill Saul. After Saul had left the cave and gone on his way, David came out and shouted after him, My lord, the king. And when Saul looked around, David bowed low before him. When, then he shouted to Saul, Why do you listen to the people who say, I'm trying to harm you? This very day you can see with your own eyes. It isn't true, for the Lord placed you at my mercy back there in the cave. Some of my men told me to kill you, but I spared you. For I said, I will never harm the king. He is the Lord's anointed one. Look, my father, at what I have in my hand. It is a piece of the hem of your robe. I cut it off, but I didn't kill you. This proves that I am not trying to harm you and that I have not sinned against you, even though you have been hunting for me to kill me. May the Lord judge between us. Perhaps the Lord will punish you for what you are trying to do to me, but I will never harm you. And that old proverb says, from evil people come evil deeds. So you can be sure I will never harm you. Who is the king of Israel trying to catch anyway? Should 
he spend his time chasing one who is worthless as a dead dog or a single flea? May the Lord therefore judge which of us is right and punish the guilty one. And then I'm going to drop down to verse 16. When David had finished speaking, Saul called back, Is that really you, my son David? Then he began to cry, and he said to David, You are a better man than I am, for you have repaid me good for evil. Yes, you have been amazingly kind to me today, for when the Lord put me in the place where you could have killed me, you didn't do it. Now here's the thing. David had the opportunity to kill Saul, the person that was trying to kill him. But David chose to do the right thing. Why? Because he loved God and he knew that God would not want him to kill the anointed king. And so it took a lot of restraint to do that. But he trusted God. He trusted God even though he, did, he doesn't know the future. I mean, he's in the land of the unknown. I mean, he doesn't know what is going to happen to him if he spares his life. Will Saul still turn around and kill him? But that's the thing. We have got to trust God with our future, even the unknown. And that can be so difficult because we want to know everything that is going on. And here Saul, it looks like, has just been landed right in his lap. I mean, he stops in the same exact cave to use the restroom that David and his men had been hiding in. What are the chances? He walks right into that same place. But David knew that God would not want him to kill Saul to take the throne that way. And it goes on and Saul says, I know that you've been anointed to be the next king. And just think if he had tried to attack him or, or what would have happened in history, but he didn't. He spared his life because he knew that that was the right thing to do and that what God would have him to do. Now, David didn't know if Saul would kill him once he left the cave. He didn't know if Saul would give up on his hunt. He didn't know, but he just had to trust God in that moment and to do the right thing. And then he didn't worry. He knew that God was in control. And even in the darkest of times, and even when he couldn't see the future, he trusted God right where he was. And you know, some of you might be seeing some dark times. You might feel like you were in, in the back and you, of this really dark cave and you don't know what's ahead. You don't know when you're going to see the light again. And it may just seem so uncertain and so unknown. God wants you to trust Him in all of this. The first thing that He wants you to do when it comes to the fear of the unknown, the first thing He wants you to do is to trust in the Lord. Give your fear to God and remember that God loves you. You've got to put your trust in Him first. Second, you have to stay faithful to God. Don't try to make things happen all on your own and don't let your fear cause you to sin. David refused to kill Saul even when he had the chance, but he took great courage and holding back his sword. But David knew what he needed to do, and that was trust God to work all of the things out. And that's the third thing that we have to do. We have to trust God to work things out for us. We have to be patient, we have to wait on Him, and we have to be content with God. And in the end, God will work things out for the best, for His plan, because that's what He promised us. In Jeremiah 29, 11, the verse says, and you guys know this is one of my favorite verses, and it's our memory verse for today, and it says this, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. 
We may not know what our future is, but guess what? We serve a God who knows everything, and He is in control, and we have to trust Him. We have to look to Him. We have to remain faithful, and then we have to know, and we have to be patient, and allow God to work the things out in His plan, because His plans are so much better than our plans. So many times, we get into trouble when we try to make things happen. That's not what God wants us to do. When it comes to our future, and I'm not talking just to students and boys and girls, I'm talking to moms and dads, and I know I'm guilty of it because I love to have a plan. And I like to know what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, and how I'm going to do it. And you guys know that about Pastor Angie. I'm very organized and how I do stuff. But I know that I first must give those plans to God. And I have to trust Him. And even when I don't see, even when I don't know, and even in the darkest of times, I have to trust God and give my fear to Him, knowing that He'll order my steps. He'll work all things out for my good because He loves us. And remain faithful. Remain faithful to Him. Don't give in to the fear and don't allow that fear to allow you to sin because you want to make sure your eyes are on Him, that you're trusting Him, you're faithful, and you're trusting that He's going to work things out. And that may mean being a little patient, but I promise you, when you do, God works it all out for us. Now, I want to pray with you guys, and I don't know what it is. It may be the uncertainty of of a job or a move or somebody's health and you don't know what's in store or what's ahead of you but guess what God's got you he's right there with you he is in control let's pray father we thank you for your word we thank you for the story of of David and how we don't need to fear the future but we can trust in you God <coughs> And you will work all things out for our good. And because, God, your plans are higher than ours. So help us, Lord, that we will first, that we will trust you. And that we'll be faithful, too. And we will remain faithful to you in all that you have called us to do. And then we know that, God, we can trust you to work everything out. Help us to, to be patient and to wait on you and your plan because your plans are perfect and your ways and your plans are higher than ours. So, Father, help us to trust you in these times. And I know when it comes to the future, Lord, we don't know what's ahead, but you do. So, God, help us during these times and even the dark times when it just seems like there's no light around us and we are so far back in the cave. God, help us to see the light of you and the light and the truth of your word and that you love us and that you have plans for us, not to harm us, but to give us a hope and a future. And we know that we can stand on your promises because those promises are secure and those are true. So God, we thank you for it and we give you all the praise and the glory for it's in Jesus' name we pray and everybody said amen. Guys, you guys have a great week and walk in faith, walk in trust, give those fears to God. Even though you don't know what's ahead of you, God does, and He promises to look out for you, and He says He has plans not to harm you, but to prosper you, and to give you a hope and a future. Guys, until next time, I'll see you later.